Oh, what do we got here? Looks like it's ready to go. Today is a special day, isn't it? Yes, it is. What do you think, Patty? You think it's a special day? She agrees. No? Well, we'll warm you up again. This tractor is five years younger than me. I don't get up so quick in the morning either. Grain truck's coming tomorrow. Nine years ago today, I left my job as an architect. Wow. This sure is getting a nice crust on it. I'll turn the heat down and slow smoke it. I don't remember much about that day. I remember packing up my stuff into a <laughs> plastic bag, whatever I could fit in the bag, and I left most of my stuff at work, and I left. I do remember how lucky I felt to have a support network. My partner's in the business. <laughs> You're not supposed to stick your butt toward the camera. My partner's in the business. Hillary was very supportive. I was a mess, and I left my job empty. I had no idea what I was going to do. Oh, I'll put you in there. I don't know where that bolt goes. It's not my intention to dwell on that bad stuff in this video. And I've talked about it before, and the last thing I want to be is repetitive. I try to do things that I enjoy, which is 
pretty much everything on the farm <laughs> on the anniversary of my departure. Nine years is a long time and it really gives me some perspective on my journey. So what do I think of it nine years in? Looking back, there were distinct phases, and the longest one was the preparation phase, although I didn't know I was preparing. When Hillary and I, as you probably know by now, moved to this place, it was wrecked. There was nothing here. I owned this. I had inherited it from my grandfather, but in total, the property was worth, I remember the first tax bill, it was worth $45,000, and the house was zero of that money. The land was worth $45,000. Hillary and I spent, let's see, from 1996 to 2006, at least 10 years, building a house, building the garage, building the addition, developing the land with no farm then, of course. And at the same time, I was saving. Hillary was saving. We were both working. We were saving, saving, saving. So that preparation period, that 20 years, was important. If I just lit out and said, I'm quitting my job and I was living in debt, I don't think it would have worked very well. But even so, even having no debt, I was scared when I left my job because I was 44. I didn't have enough retirement savings to just retire. I had to find a new vocation. I had to find a way to support the family. At that point, Hillary wasn't working either. She was home taking care of the three kids while I worked. So, fear. I guess that was phase two. Actually, nope, there was a phase 1A in there, and that was depression. Five years before I left my job, you know, it takes a big push to get out of what you're doing, especially when you're making a good living. You gotta be in a really bad place. That happened between saving and fear. Depression. Not a good place to be for that many years. All right, guys. Come on. Come on, Rusty. Get up, you. He ain't shy anymore, is he? All right, there you go. Well, you got a big belly. You must have been eating a lot of hay. Phase three was searching. What am I gonna do? This took me a couple months, and before long, I was farming, which brought me to phase four, the farm. I went all in. We grew it, we expanded it, I read, I watched, I learned everything I could, expanded our customer base, grew out to our ultimate size, and here we are with a nice customer base, a sustainable business as far as income for our family. What's next? Howdy, pickers. How are you little ones doing? Staying warm? I love birds. What you do with your dish? You guys, you're nuts. I'm gonna have to climb in there and get it. Okay. There we go. Whoops. Well, now watch out. Oh, aren't you two peas in a pod? Well. John never cares much for his water when it's by himself, but once he's in with somebody else, he's a pig. Won't let anybody else drink. Right, Red? Ugh. Typical male, isn't he? No, oh, you're not very nice. All right, little ones. Watch out. Here we go. Dinner. I am a believer in continually challenging yourself, never laying back on what you've accomplished. I've done it all my life. I did it in architecture. I did it with the farm. And I'm wondering, what's next? This is the anniversary, this ninth anniversary. I'm starting to lean. What's next? And YouTube was what's next a couple of years ago. The farm was approaching where it needed to be. and. YouTube was the next challenge. I'm wondering what's next for YouTube. I've watched YouTube long enough to know that there is a typical arc to channels. They start kind of flat. They grow if they hit. And after a while, they need to change to continue to grow. Or it becomes old. 
Same thing over and over again. Just like in life, to keep ourselves vital, we need to always be changing and growing. The same with a show that you watch on YouTube, whatever it is. You can't just have the same day over and over again. There needs to be a struggle. You solve one struggle, you move on to the next. What's the next struggle? I, mean, I spent the, the early days in YouTube trying to show other people who were going through life changes like I have and were thinking about starting a fall, small farm, how it's done, laying out the numbers, laying out the processes. And I covered that territory pretty well. You know, I'm sure there's things I could go back and explain further, but then the channel became the routine on the farm, getting to know the pigs and the cattle and their personalities and me and my family's personalities and having a little fun with that. That's been good. But my, I, my core mission was to change the world. <laughs> It's not at all extravagant, is it? I want people to go back to local small farms and even if it isn't farming, lead a more meaningful life. Lead something that's making a change for the better in the world and realizing that the nine to five grind may never get you where you want to go and to live your life in quiet desperation is not a good way to live. So. What do I do? Where do I go to make an impact? What, what changes with the channel? I don't know. Some ideas. The picayune stuff in life has always driven me nuts. All the little minutia of how you do this and how you do that and the little debates you get into over how you do this and how you do that. And I really don't want the channel to devolve into that. And I try to avoid it, although it's always coming in. I want it to be about a bigger picture and about deep thinking and about new ideas. Not, I want to appeal to people that are coming up through and, and can make an impact on the world and have energy and vitality and a, and a purpose. How do you do that? I don't know. I only come up with sort of ordinary ideas for evolving the channel building a better garage and going into more mechanical restoration work and there's lots of successful channels out there that do that but it doesn't appeal to the more philosophical aspects that I can get into with farming as much. The other direction I could go is to move the farm in more of a self-sufficiency focus, grow a, a larger percentage of our own food other than just meat and eggs talk about ways to become more self-sufficient off the grid um, as we mostly are and work from that angle. There you can get into the more meaningful conversations which is what I've always been after in architecture and in life and the YouTube channel. But the issue is that people want to be entertained by YouTube more than anything else and I can understand that. When I turn on YouTube in the evening, I look for the videos that take me someplace that I'm not. And, you know, it's just kind of a way of taking a little vacation. Sometimes I look at educational videos and videos that challenge my thinking, but mostly it's entertainment. So I guess that's a third direction to continue an entertainment focus and just bring in new material. And that could be more mechanical work, it could be farming different animals, changing the farm somehow. The farm operates as it is almost automatically now. We've got the processes down so well and the income streams and the customer relations and the markets that it's nice to be able to be able to think about other things, you know, besides focusing so much on just how the farm runs but rather um, keeping the farm running and putting enough attention to that. Obviously you can't let it go because things wind down if you don't pay enough attention to them. But being able to branch into other areas. So on this ninth anniversary of my leaving my job, I'm thinking about new directions and not coming to any conclusions. I know one thing I can bring to conclusion and that's this pork belly. 
This pork belly is off the pig that Hillary and I slaughtered this winter, and this is my special cut of pork belly that's still got the spare ribs attached to it. And the pork belly is keeping the spare ribs nice and juicy. They've been in the smoker for about six hours now. I'm gonna cover them up, put them in the oven in the house, cook them at about 275 or so till dinner time. They'll be falling apart. Just the way I like them. Oh, you guys drank all your water. Must be that hay we gave you this morning. Hey, buddy. When you're with the Flintstones, they're a modern Stone Age family. Rusty, you've been around a lot lately. Hey, you little monsters. I know that you guys got plenty of feed and water. Just checking to make sure you're all on four feet. Looks like you are. Here they come. Hey guys. Looks like you've been eating. Looks like you've been digging. <laughs> you guys like to come and see me, don't you? Yes, you do. All right, carry on. Well, let's see how falling up. Oh, spare ribs. Huh. Looks good. Boy, that just fell right off of the spare ribs. Today I'm giving Hillary the first bite because a number of viewers have said ladies first, so I'll honor that. Mmm, very good. Very hot. Don't talk with your mouth full. <laughs> People get mad about that, you know. This will make a very good ninth anniversary dinner. Did we come to any conclusions today? No. That's life, I guess. I hope you can smell this through the camera. It smells delicious. I hope you have a great day. And I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.